Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, plenty of opinion polls in this morning's papers, as you'd expect in the last weekend before the vote. There will be more to come in the days ahead. Of course, polls are not quite the holy grail these days, especially after their failure to get the result right in last year's election. And the pollsters find referenda even trickier than other votes. But imperfect as they may be, they're what we've got, and they've told an interesting story throughout the campaign. Polls conducted by phone, like this one back in May by Ipsos Mori, have consistently put Remain ahead, here with an 18-point lead, the largest of the campaign. But signs things were changing emerged at the end of last month, as one phone poll showed Leave three points ahead. And just this Thursday, the latest Ipsos Mori survey caused a bit of a stir when it showed Leave with a six-point lead. So that's the phone polls. But those carried out online have shown a different story, with the two sides level pegging, or with leave ahead. Back in May, before the Perda period, which stopped the government taking part in the campaign, one internet poll gave leave a three-point lead. Almost a month later, another online poll, this one by ICM, had leave five points ahead. But this YouGov survey is one of four polls released overnight, showing both sides a neck and neck, suggesting the result is too close to call. So that's the uh, story told by the polls in the months leading up to the referendum. And just so you have the full picture of today's findings, you got for the Sunday Times, puts Remain on 44%, one point ahead of Leave on 43. Another YouGov poll for Good Morning Britain gives Leave two points ahead. Opinion for the Observer has Leave and Remain level pegging at 44%. And Servation for the Mail on Sunday, the only telephone poll today, has Remain on 45% and Leave on 42%. So, what do you make of all that? There's only one man we can turn to to explain what it all means. I speak, of course, of elections and polling expert John Curtis. He join, joins me now. John, four new polls are out in the papers this morning. What do they tell us? Well, they certainly provide a degree of relief for David Cameron and those in the Remain side after what were some pretty dire polls last week, which almost unanimously suggested there'd been a sharp drop in support for Remain during the course of the last four weeks. But it is perhaps an indication of, as it were, just how tight this referendum has become, that three internet polls that between them suggested it's 50-50, and one telephone poll that, although puts Remain back in the lead, still uh, puts Re Remain's lead much <laughs> narrower than the same pollster had done at any previous point in this referendum campaign. The fact that that's now regarded as relatively good news for Remain is an indication of just quite how much trouble they had seemingly got into. These polls, I think, were taken at a time when it, it's too early, I think I'm right, tell me if I'm not, too early to see if the uh, appalling tragedy of Joe Cox has had, a, had an impact on the campaign. Well, I think, I think that's correct. That, uh, I mean, the Salvation Telephone poll was done entirely afterwards. Uh, one of the YouGov polls was done mostly afterwards. Now, YouGov are saying, well, look, the poll that we did just before was already showing Remain uh, increasing. The one after just shows it continuing further. So, I, I mean, given that there was a widespread expectation that perhaps Remain would start to regain ground as people consider the possible risks of uh, uh, voting for leave. Uh, maybe this process already kicked in, and that's the process that's explaining there's something of a move back, back, back towards Remain. It need not necessarily anything to do with the tragic murder of Joe Cox. But the truth is, we pro I mean, th there isn't anything in these polls, certainly for us to be able to pin it quite definitively on that particular event. Uh, two things, John. The, um, it is often said in referenda that in the final days there's a reversion to the status quo. Mm -hmm. status quo and this would be to vote to remain is there any sign of that and and what can you tell us about the undecideds because I saw some of the undecideds uh, some of the polling suggests that those who are undecided if they vote they're more likely to vote for remain uh, than to vote to come out well on your first point um, uh, Andrew it's precisely whether or not that process of people reverting back to the status quo 
is already kicking in and that this explains why the polls this weekend are somewhat better than those that there were during the course of the week. And certainly I think what it does seem to be the case is and one of the questions we were asking ourselves was, was that movement to leave, as it were, a stone that was gathering, gradually gathering more moss and would continue further into this weekend? That clearly hasn't happened. So certainly Remain may hope that people are reverting back to the status quo. Um, so I, I think that, that's the first point where we lie there. Your second question, Andrew, I forgot. Was on the, tell us about the significance of the undecideds. Well, the truth is the number of undecideds are going down. The number of people who say they've made up their mind is going up. You are right that most opinion polls find that, first of all, the thing that don't, the don't knows are most likely to do is not to vote. The second thing they're most likely to do is to vote for Remain. But the advantage is that most of the order of three to two, and we should bear in mind that many of the opinion polls that are published now are already including into their headline tallies the reported votes of those who initially say they're undecided but are then asked to follow up squeeze questions. So we shouldn't necessarily assume that there is more ground to be gained for Remain from that particular phenomenon. It's often factored into the figures we're already looking at. John Curtis, as always, thank you very much for that. Now, only a few days to go, so how will the campaigns try to win over undecided voters in the short time they have left remaining? We're joined now from Somerset by the former Lib Dem leader Paddy Ashdown. He's back in Remain and here in the studio in London by Labour MP and Leave campaigner John Mann. Welcome to you both. Paddy Ashdown, let me come to you first. Do you get a sense this weekend, if I can put it this way, that the Remain campaign is back on track? Andrew Neil, you really want to bring me on straight after John Curtis, my nemesis, and ask me to disagree with him. Well, I, uh, I haven't asked you, you to eat your hat, though. <laughs> That's coming up. <laughs> the, the, the last, exactly. The last time I had to eat my hat. By the way, I've disagreed with John Curtis twice now on the eve of poll, and I've been wrong on every occasion. <laughs> and I'm, I'm delighted to be able to make my apologies to him on your programme. I don't know, Andrew. I don't know. I think, I think um, what you're talking about with John about the undecideds may well be the key to this. How will they break? Will they vote? Will they not? And if they do... Will they, as people predict, vote in favour of Remain? Frankly, I don't think any of us know, even the blessed John Curtis. This is all within the margin of error. It's all to play for. It looks to me, uh, and agreeing with John Curtis, exceedingly tight. Perhaps there's been a small shift mm. in favour of Remain, but honestly, too small to be able to be certain about. We got some more scare stories about the economy from the Chancellor this morning on I ITV. Is that in the final three days starting tomorrow, there'll be three more days of campaigning to go intense, I would think. Is that the right way to go no. or would you advise the Remain campaign to start putting out a, po a more positive message about remaining in the EU? Uh, they're following a playbook they followed before. Uh, I'm not involved with the Remain campaign. My advice to voters is when it comes to predictions on the economy, don't listen to either side. Listen to the independent voices whose job it is, paid by all the nations on earth, to make judgments about the economic consequences of our political actions. They could be wrong. They've been wrong before, but are they all wrong? Uh, and is only Mr. Johnson and Mr. Farage right? You know, I think people have to realise that they're betting their jobs on this. They're betting the national economy on this. No one is certain. There's nothing that's certain. But I think when you make the judgment, you will probably want to weigh in your mind, not Mr. Osborne's comments, or indeed Mr. Johnson's from the other side, their party pre. They're inevitably going to put the point as they want to. But those independent voices, every single one of them, without exception, who are independent of the campaign, who are the global experts on this, uh, this is not a conspiracy, it's a consensus, it is unanimous. All of them say this will seriously damage our economy. And I think for most people, worried about their jobs, and rightly so if you go the wrong way, that will be a more powerful factor in making their decision than perhaps the words hot, cold, overstated or understated of either of the opposition parties. Uh, although some in Remain may not regard it as helpful, but Mr Corbyn told the BBC this morning that with free movement within the EU, you can have no upper limit <clears> on immigration. <throat> that was accurate. That was honest, well, wasn't it? Well, 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 one thing you can be sure of, Andrew, and you know, if we leave the European Union, you will control immigration, but not in the way that the out campaign is claiming. You'll trash the economy, we'll have far fewer jobs, and no one will want to come here. That is for absolutely sure.
let's get me right because your language there is interesting we will trash the economy not that we sure. won't grow as fast no. not that it would be better to stay in no. than come out but no. that we will no, trash I'll... the economy well i mean uh, let me okay find another word andrew if you wish but look here we are slowly recovering from the recession if you had a huge pain to get out of the mess we were in, the international economy, all of those who comment say in big terms or small terms, they use strong ones or relatively more moderated ones, but they all agree that this will push us back into recession. Now, you can use the trash the economy or you can say we're going back into recession. The question is that just as we're coming out, creating those jobs, you know, making Britain one of the best economies growing in Europe will turn that round. Now, you choose your words, but the consequence in people's jobs, in their businesses, uh, and indeed in the tax revenues of the government that pays for our public services, will be very, very serious. All right. Uh, John Mann, uh, immigration has been a big part of the Leave campaign. Uh, has the tone, did the tone get too hostile in immigration? Did it get too robust? Yes, and Farage's poster is the worst example of that. It's better it wasn't produced. It'd be better now if he withdrew it. It's unhelpful, uh, it's inaccurate, it's irrelevant to the real debate. Um, so yes, that tone has been very unhelpful. And what did you make of Mr Corbyn's remarks on immigration this morning? Well, the, the issues in working class communities remain, and those issues are about pay, they're about agency work, uh, they're about people's hopes for the future. And uh, when you've got zero hour contracts, when you've got your health service under pressure and people seeing privatisation and cuts, you know, the Labour agenda on Friday, whatever the result, has to get into that. Indeed, if it's a leave vote, one of the first things Labour could be doing is demanding an immediate end under the EU procurement rules to privatisation of the public services. Could be arguing in favour of an increase in public sector pay. Could be arguing to stop the... Uh, the impact of the European Court rulings on reinforcing agencies and agencies and this uncertainty in the labour market that's really, I think, um, behind the strength in, uh, that appears to be there in working class communities for leave. What is the plan for the rest of the campaign? There are only three days to go from tomorrow morning from the leave side. Is it, is it immigration, immigration, immigration again? Uh, I hope not. I hope it's about hope and vision for what kind of country you want in the future and how best in the modern technological age where the computer has been invented, where we order things online, where those big developments are going to get even faster about how we best deal with the whole of the world. I, I think politicians, MPs certainly, are, um, remain, all of us, myself included, extremely shaken by uh, the, the, the horrific murder of Joe Cox. I think that there's going to be less campaigning, a lot less than there was, because I don't think people have it. However strong people's views, they don't really want to be banging and knocking on doors at the current time. Mm. So I think there's going to be uh, a, a period of less politicians out and about than there mm. would have been. There seemed to be a fair win are. behind leave uh, last week, certainly up until the terrible events on Thursday. Do you get a sense this weekend that it could be slipping away from you? Uh, I would have expected... Uh, uh, from the polls last time for them to bounce back a little bit. It's going to depend on turnout. Uh, and if, if there's a disproportionately high turnout in the areas that don't normally vote, mm. that's going to end up with a leave vote. If it's lower there, then it's going to be remain. So turnout will decide it. Turnout's not predictable. I hope it's mm. the majority, the vast majority of people voting. And whatever the result, I think we need to get together as a country and the different sides need to get together and get behind that result. Paddy Ashdown, I wonder, I wonder uh, if you'd allow me. Yes, yeah, please. I, 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 it's a really important statement John Mann has just made. By the way, I, I admire him very much, and I know he's just as patriotic and interested in the future of this country as I am. But I thought, um, you know, if it is the case that that terrible death of Joe Cox, who I campaigned with on the issue of refugees and had a huge admiration for, has led to a change in tone. I think I'd be hugely welcome. And I thought the way John put his case there, and in particular the way he moved away from the Farage vote poster, which I found thoroughly distasteful, uh, I think that's a, a, you know, if that's the tone of this campaign, I don't think it will hugely alter the result. But at last we'll have a campaign 
um, that we can be proud of, one that I'm, I'm afraid I've felt so far extremely ashamed about, these high-octane insults, by the way, from both sides. I mean, some of that's because this is an internal civil war in the Tory party, and they're always the worst. But, I mean, you know, I, I, I was in Yeovil the other day, and a man came up to the end campaign and said that they should all be executed. Now, if we can get away from that, if we can now lower the tone follow the kind of approach that John Mann has been suggesting, we will have a good debate that will honour our democracy and its essential qualities of respect for others and tolerance, rather than uh, the kind of thing that we've had in recent, in, 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 in recent weeks. John Mann, Nothing will... That, the, by the way, made everybody very angry. Will the final three days of the campaign be that different in tone? Uh, I think they will be. Um, I think certainly members of parliament uh, will be careful on the language used, uh, I, I hope on the Leave side, everyone will distance themselves from what Farage's poster and what lay behind that meant, and I hope on the Remain side, people will, will, will shift away from the exaggerations that have taken place. Yeah, I, stick, I, but, stick to the big by, issues, by the, way, the big I, principles. Very briefly, Paddy Asha. By the way, I agree with that too. I mean, you know, uh, hyperbole is a kind of lie, and I think we have dealt in hyperboles. I think the, the public is, frankly, not trusting either side. And I think if we can change that now, if we can come back to a statement of the facts, maybe even relying on independent opinions, I think the last few days of this okay. campaign will, uh, will, will, will honour us rather than shame so, us in the way. So, in it. the interest of our anti-hyperbole drive, can both <laughs> remain and leave <laughs> agree that when the French economic minister says if we vote to leave we'll be no more important than Guernsey, we can file that under hyperbole. Well, Paddy Ashton? Yeah, yeah I, you can. Okay. Um, by the way, you may be able to file trash. <laughs> you can file it under <laughs> we're, hyperbole we're, in my view. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Paddy Ashton. John, man, we can file that under hyperbole too. We I can see. indeed. Unhelpful. Right. Okay. We'll leave it there. Thank you both. I've been getting